afternoon and welcome to where news is brought to you as it happens. I'm talking about KTN News Desk. My name is Edith Kimani. My name is Bonnie Tunya. It is the 16th day of this month of July 2014. As she said, news as it happens. My name is Bonnie Tunya. Welcome to the program. Trade unions affiliated to the Central Organization of Trade Unions, or COTU if you like, have expressed dissatisfaction over the government's intended restructuring of the civil service. Now they also decried the intended removal of COTU and FKE from the NSSF board as per the Labor Cabinet Secretary's Executive Directive. Kotu is now seeking an appointment with President Uhuru Kenyatta to dialogue on labor matters. Right. The leaders of the union present told the press that there are challenges within the civil service, but sending them home is not a viable solution. Uh, rationalization, harmonization, and retraining. These are basically semantics which may not fit into uh, and. Uh, getting into what we suspect is basically talking about retrenchment. Kenya at this moment cannot afford to retrench. We, we are only worried that it will be the same, same old story, that we do write to the head of state, to the cabinet secretary, and there is no response. But on our part, we have done that, we have communicated. But I can tell you, in the absence of a tripartite meeting, there is virtually nothing that can move. And that's why we are demanding we need that tripartite meeting so that we are able to discuss the issues of bedeviling workers in this country. Mambo si mazuri, na ni muhimu kwamba tujulisha za serikali kwamba mambo si mazuri. Ili warekebishe, kama wasifufanya na mna hivo, vile mwuzao kama sema, wiki jaya ukotu takutana, na kote kitukana, ikukutana, basi tutapanga mambo yetu, waru wanafaina mna ganyi. Kwa sababu, mambo yanaduzidi, wafanyikazi wanazidi kumia. Saidi naambiwa kwamba wafanyikazi wengine wanaacha kazi. Walimu wanaambiwa watafanya watafanya nini? Watakuwa na contract. Badala ya kuwa na kazi ya mwezi ya mwezi watakuwa na contract. Tunaelekea wapi kama nchi? Well, from workers um, call for dialogue move to a rather sad story. I mean, I, I think we were all punished growing up, right? You more than myself. <laughs> okay. But this is a story of extremes where an eight-year-old boy is recuperating at the Meru County Hospital after his mother forcefully placed his hands on a burning charcoal stove for harvesting potatoes from the family farm. That's right. That report is by KTN's Catherine Omanthe. on his hands will heal eventually but it will take a lot more for this eight-year-old boy to heal psychologically according to a social worker in Imenti North the child did no wrong only took potatoes from his family farm because he was hungry his mother who perceived his actions as disobedience placed his hands in a burning charcoal stove as punishment the child was um, burned on the hands by the mother and uh, it, the case was reported to us by the area assistant chief for police application. It was the neighbors who witnessed the incident who reported to the assistant chief. However, by the time the local administrator got to the boy's home, his biological mother had already disappeared from the scene. The boy was rushed to hospital where nurses say he's responding well to treatment, adding that this is not an isolated case. Mary residents have been urged to report any incidences of child abuse to the children's office or to the police. Catherine Omwando, KTN. Very difficult story to watch, but let's move on where Embu Speaker Justice Karioki Mate and the County Assembly Clerk Jim Kauma have denied receiving any court orders barring them from debating the impeachment of Embu Governor Martin Wambora. Now, while arguing their case before the Court of Appeal in Nyeri, the two leaders said they were never served with the order. The two insisted that the motion leading to Wambora's impeachment was legally before the County Assembly at the time of the debate. Mate and Kauma were defending themselves against contempt of court charges facing them. Now, the charges were preferred against them by the Kerugoya High Court on April 19th this year. Governor Wambora was present in court during the hearing.
We remain in the counties where Garissa County Governor Nadef Jama has signed an emergency fund bill into law. The bill spells out how the county will undertake its revenue collection and licensing policies. The governor cautioned that the county was yet to get off the hook of perennial drought. There are always disasters. There are always uh, special programs, activities that we have to do. Uh, we have to engage in as a county government. Um, like for instance now, as you all know, we are facing um, uh, you know, a, a drought situation in the county here. And when we have this kind of bill, then we are in a position to spend some amount of our budget to support the needy families uh, in the county. Celebrated talk show host Jeff Koinange yesterday launched an inspirational autobiography titled Through My African Eyes. Now the book focused on Jeff's journey through his career from working at CNN to how he ended up being the first African ever to win a television Emmy. Tables were however turned during the launch as Jeff was on the bench where guests were able to put him on the spot as he answered their questions. And when they asked me to do the announcements on the plane, sure enough, some stories followed. Incredible stories we did. And he blew his gates. My goodness. Harvard University. Ooh. He grew up in any college. What do I say? What? They say it's yes. Thank you so much. It's one of the very few stories, the very few African stories that's told by an African. And, and, and the, you know, the challenge we have is most African stories are told by foreigners. They're told by people from Europe and the US. And this one is told in a very African way as well. You know, Jeff goes into details. The experiences, country after country, I've been to 47 out of the 54 countries in Africa. My experiences in some of those countries and, you know, very touching and, and, and poignant experiences that I, that I had in those countries. I'm going to say sit back. Smoking. <laughs> Smoking. Well, do catch up with Jeff Koinange. Um, on the bench, obviously, where right. he hosts a, a multifacet of guests. Correct. And that is every Wednesday and Thursday night, 10 p.m. on KTN Prime. Elsewhere, the Supreme Court has reversed the decision by the Court of Appeal to nullify the election of Silvas Anami Lisamula as Shinyalu Member of Parliament. In April, the Court of Appeal sitting in Kisumu nullified the election of the Shinyalu MP. Three appellate judges ruled that there was violence in Shinyalu on the eve of March 4th polls that affected the outcome of the election. However, Supreme, uh, rather, the Supreme Court has reinstated uh, Lisa Muller, saying the Court of Appeal lacks jurisdiction in making the ruling. The Supreme Court also says the petition against the Shinyalu MP's election was time barred by the time of filing. It has taken a lot of patience on the part of uh, the Shinyalu people uh, because we have lost a lot on time, on a lot of energy uh, and uh, on focus. I'm happy that um, the decision has been made and um, uh, it has honored the decision of uh, Shinyalu people and I want to thank uh, our judicial process uh, for this um, uh, very important decision that they have made. Well, the Western Gishu County has been in the news lately for all the wrong reasons, especially pertaining to illicit mm. alcohol. <clears throat> and the National Agency for Campaign Against Drug and Alcohol Abuse, Nakada, today launched a massive campaign against illicit brew in the North Rift region. Now, this comes days after more than 20 people lost their lives in the area after consuming adulterated drinks. The caravan, flagged off in Eldoret Town, will tour various constituencies to create awareness about the dangers of consuming illicit brew. Bar owners in the region, however, did not hide their displeasure at the county government's initiative to close down their businesses following alcohol-related deaths. They maintained it wasn't their fault, but that of the distributors. Tangu on Sunday, watu walipoaga, tumefunga mabiashara zetu, na tuwele ziwi ni kwanini, ama iyo bani itakuwa uplifted when, tunaenda asara, tenants wetu pia watatoroka, 
customers wamepotea kwa mabaa atuuzi serikali wafanye jambo jambo la kwanza au wenye wanatolewa hapa ndani hapa hivi wanatolewa vitu ndani hapo au kwa upande wangu naona sio makosa makosa ni kwa government let they look where these things come from and they stop that place fast we thought it wise that we hold a stakeholders forum we shall be meeting here at the county hall on thursday this week and we are bringing together different stakeholders that includes the survivors of the ordeal uh, family members of the victims uh, agencies that are supposed to be uh, playing a key role in this uh, we have security team Time now for a short commercial break, but right. when we come back... When we come back, other than telling you about KQ's new mobile check-in system, there's a, yet a new player in the tech space, and uh, someone else is offering a new uh, smartphone. Our lives, I told you, are dependent on this phone's techno. And we'll just be talking with uh, Clifford Motella on how they intend to make a splash in this market. Sounds like something you ought to know. Do stay tuned for the details. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Time for business. Now we seated on this side. You know we are having an afternoon business chat. But before that, regional operator Rift Valley Railways has invested 200 million shillings in two railway truck maintenance machines. The new equipment will automate the speed up uh, and speed up rather the truck restoration process as RVR positions itself for increased cargo flow. Kenya's, Kenya Railways Network has maintained, has rather remained in a sorry state for years now, with little or no investment man made to upgrade it. Last week, RVR received six billion shillings capital injections to speed up its expansion and upgrade the program. The railway operator will use a further five billion shillings to upgrade the railway infrastructure, as well as acquire 20 new, uh, 20 new locomotives. Will much will be much improved track stability, fewer incidents, and landline blockage time for maintenance. This means that the line will be freed up to do what it should be doing. One, moving more cargo, and two, keeping it moving. Passengers flying Kenya Airways can now check in for their flights using their mobile phones. The mobile check-in service will be initially available for domestic flights with the airline keen to introduce it for international passengers as well. Now this is before the end of the third quarter. Through the service, KQ will be able to send the, mess, uh, the passengers their boarding pass as an SMS to allow for mobile boarding, offering a faster and more convenient way to check in and board. Passengers will be able to select their rates and their seats, rather, as well as get updates on flight cancellations or delays. Kenya Airways is using this new service to enhance the customer experience, making air travel a less daunting task for Kenyans. Right, time for afternoon business chat and many have been wondering if this bit of the show is a tech show it's not a tech show it's just that we have any conversation that we think matters to you we bring it on here now we've had different conversations about tech of late but there's a new entrant in this space and they're keen to make a splash in this market i'm talking about techno and uh, what they're doing in the african space clifford mortella joins me now from techno karibu sana thank you for having me Bonnie. clifford what makes you think you can take on the big boys well, um, actually, we've been here for the last six years. Right. And um, we started uh, uh, selling uh, entry-level devices, mm -hmm. uh, feature phones. We have recently got into the smartphone space. Mm -hmm. And um, tell you what, Kenyans, about 10 million Kenyans uh, look for information on the internet every day. Right. That market is big enough mm -hmm. for all the boys to play. Mm -hmm. Yes. So whether you're big or not. <laughs> whether you're big or not. What, what is so peculiar about the Kenyan um, smartphone or, or, or gadget consumer? Because we're seeing an increasing presence of people like you setting shop in Kenya, and you're not lacking. There's space for everyone in this, in this pie. Kenyans are looking for, number one, affordability. Right. Number two, reliability and functionality. Mm -hmm. Techno fuses both. Right. High performance, uh, reliability, and affordability. Correct. For... Uh, we have interesting devices coming into the market. Mm -hmm. The latest one is the one I'm holding right here, the Techno Z. Right. 
Um, we've, we're at pains uh, as smartphone users uh, because the uh, battery life doesn't last that yes, long. Yes, the curse of the smartphone. Yes. Right. So the Techno Z fuses both uh, high performance and low power consumption. Mm -hmm. It comes with an 8-core processor, uh, which is 2 gigahertz, and runs on 2 GB RAM, right. which is pretty amazing right at a very affordable price techno t t talk to me about the trends now because a lot of us in this space in the handheld device space are moving uh, we, we saw the death of the PC and now the death of the laptop everyone is moving into tablets and phablets what's next in this space well um, this space really uh, you need to do everything on the go mm -hmm. So you need a device that you can, you can get your information, you can communicate with your family, mm -hmm. and at, at, at the, I mean, on the go. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, that's what's trending right now. Right. You need a device that is uh, functional, that is affordable, mm -hmm. and that you can use for 24 hours. Right. Right. You, do, you don't want a situation where you run out of battery mm -hmm. and you're in the middle of traffic and you right. can't charge it. Right. So yes. That and is of course all of you guys have sold that with uh, having us carry around power banks everywhere we go. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, that is just, uh, a, this, it's a bridging gap. Mm -hmm. But really uh, what Kenyans are looking for is carrying one device. Uh, that can do all that right at an affordable price. How do you incorporate this in business? Uh, let's talk about the corporate space for yes. example People are moving away from from the desk from the laptops um, how um, Is the modern corporate Kenyan adapting to the surge in this kind of devices? well um, There's an increase uptick on uh, tablets. Uh, we recently launched uh, a tablet, a 7-inch tablet that was very popular in the market, a 7-inch tablet, which is uh, a bit a bit portable, a bit better than the 10-inch uh, tablet. Right. And I think the corporate uh, the corporates are moving away from PCs to tablets right. because you know, you can carry this tablet into a meeting and you know, you you do your your all, all your um, all your work on it. Right. And um, I think that's the direction. Uh, we are working with our partners to develop uh, amazing uh, tablets mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. And yes, please watch this space. All right. Clifford, um, when we talk about all these tablets and everything and, and how the uptake is and, and, and everyone is, is accessing these, and you guys have been churning out new technology. When I talk about you guys, I'm talking about all the players in this market. There is the question of e-waste management. Yes. Because I need to take somewhere my old feature phone that I bought from you guys. What's um, in the cards for Techno to ensure that um, the, the market they're operating, uh, there's, there are some measures for e-waste management? Interesting that you mentioned that. Um, we are working with our, one of our partners. Right to have a very aggressive drive uh, on e-waste management. Um, I will uh, share the details uh, as soon as they're ready and right. approved. Right. But yes, uh, we're in the forefront of making sure that our environment is kept clean as mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. and that uh, we are able to, you know, um, uh, throw away what we don't need uh, in terms of uh, devices because, you know, the uptake of devices uh, is uh, is very good right. especially this year that right. uh, all the operators want to drive smartphones so mm -hmm. the users of feature phones are upgrading so there's a lot of waste mm -hmm. and and we need to take care of that what has changed in kenya is it that the average kenya can spend more now they, they, they they're earning better because we've seen the death of feature phones in this market is it just internet that is driving this actually yes um a lot of kenyans like i said 20 million kenyans can now access the internet and 10 million do that every day right so there's need to have uh, uh, phones that can access the internet right uh, we have the fastest moving uh, entry-level internet device at the moment right. uh, for two two thousand nine hundred ninety nine mm -hmm. that tells you something people need to that's, uh, the, that's the get, cost of an yeah. of a feature phone right yes right People need uh, something that's affordable right. and uh, a device that can, uh, you know, access the internet and information on the go. Right. Yes. Clifford, who's your target audience? Who are you targeting with your products? Our target is across the demographics, right. from entry level to high level. Mm -hmm. um, we are we are competing against other players in the market who've been there for years, uh, globally acclaimed um, device manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Our device is crafted, manufactured, and designed for Africa.
Mm -hmm. So as opposed to uh, our innovation being driven by technology, we are driven by customer needs. Right. Yes. And, and that explains the battery life and all that. Exactly. Finally, I know our time is up. Uh, we've seen the Phantom Z. What's next? Well, uh, there's a lot in the cards. Yeah. I will not say anything right now. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Samsung's a couple, probably of, watching a it. couple oh, of Microsoft. Yeah, of right. course. <laughs> There are a couple of tablets coming up. Uh, we, are, we are going into partnerships with uh, some very strong partners out there in the market. Mm -hmm. And so yes. can see a lot of techno presence in the African space. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yes. That's a good place to wind up. Clifford Montella, who's in charge of ensuring that you have a smartphone device, written techno, <laughs> in your hand. This has been the KTN Afternoon Business conversation that's happening globally and one that we will continue to have here on KT and Newsdesk. To the sports now however and the annual vehicle beauty pageant. We're talking about the Concorde d'Elegance. is synonymous with old cars entered by equally old participants. But this year however, two youngsters, actually their siblings, they'll be entering for the September competition. 50 year old Amy one day and her 17 year old brother Ted will be entering in the motorcycle categories. Amy will be entering a 1990 Honda C CR80, which won the class last year in the hands of Andre Antoine. Her brother will be parading a Yamaha YZ125. Now, that Yamaha was a runner up in the class last year. 12 classes will be contested for this year. People don't expect a girl to be riding, so when I do, it just it, it makes it all look better and growing up with a dad and father that do that, the interest just comes to me as well. I'm happy to be an, an, one of the youngest entrants in the Concorde d'Elegance and I'm entering a Honda CR. The interest for Concorde started when we had this old bike that my dad used to pace me with and we decided to fix it since it's old enough for the Concorde. So um, we actually did it uh, just before the Concorde month before and we managed to have a good year that my first year was a good year and i've been i've done it two times this year will be my third time it's time for us to leave the studio right and you know the website is standardmedia.co.ke and we have just about enough time to give you your did you know fact this is very important actually if you ever need to give cpr chest compressions then the american heart association recommends that you give them to the beat of the disco hit song staying alive so imagine <laughs> huh Huh, huh, huh. I have staying never alive, heard of stay alive, alive and my friend is dying. But, is mean, there another beat? You know, like. Well, you don't need another beat. The Bee Gees have one already. Like happy would be nice. Oh gosh, but then it's too slow because I'm happy. You need ha 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 staying help. alive. <laughs> okay, I think that's important, and that's why we wind up this edition of KTN News Desk. I'm Edith Kimani. Good afternoon. My name is Bonnie Tuyu. Good afternoon.